Welcome everyone to another episode of Around the Block Talk. Today we have with us uh, Mr. Mustafa. He's the senior blockchain uh, developer at Snap Innovations by Private Limited. Uh, he's an industry veteran, having spent several years in the industry, and we are very excited to hear from you. Thank you for being here. I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, uh, hello everyone. Uh, I'm Mustafa. I'm senior blockchain developer at uh, Snap Innovations. Uh, but Snap Innovation is a Singaporean company which works mostly on uh, AI, BI, and recently blockchain. Uh, I myself doing uh, programming for more than 20 years now. Uh, I've done like different platforms and languages, but since uh, 2015, I first uh, actually uh, introduced to the blockchain. And for past few years, since 2019, late 2019, I started uh, working on uh, learning Solidity and working on uh, blockchain development. And since then, uh, I have done like different projects with different companies, but uh, because I'm mostly doing everything freelance, so I did for different companies, uh, projects regarding uh, Web3, doing like different things like uh, lottery stuff, things like that on blockchain. And uh, then I started working as a senior blockchain developer as uh, in uh, Snap Innovation. And yeah, that's all about it. Uh, that's, that's great to know and your my talk. Uh, so now we can proceed with the talk and uh, we can uh, talk about okay. blockchain. Okay. Yeah, actually I, I, I would uh, like to uh, talk about, uh, more talk about the blockchain development and why it's getting like lots of heat uh, right now. So uh, the thing is that uh, mostly uh, uh, if you're familiar with uh, how, how pro programming works, like on a general web app, you would have like two main section, which is a front end and a back end. So front end is actually the, the place that user goes and have interaction with the software. And the backend is actually uh, what, uh, uh, what is that hold the logic, all the data providing for uh, the front end, and also uh, updating the uh, and any kind of information that should be updated based on the interaction that user had and the logic it uh, actually implements. So all those data will be uh, saved inside the database, which is the most important part of each uh, software because it holds all the information. Without that, there is like all of those codes would not actually be useful because there is no data. So uh, that's the, the, the most important part, which is a database is actually handled by, handled by the backend and uh, showing all these information to the user will uh, happen using the front end. But uh, I'm sure you heard about uh, Web3 and uh, it's getting a lot of attention right now. Uh, so what Web, uh, Web3 actually uh, brings uh, to the table that uh, Web2 or uh, any, any other uh, form of uh, software would not is decentralization. So uh, all of these uh, software would have a company which actually develop, maintain, and uh, offer them to the user. So the, the, they would have a, a team of programmers and lots of servers uh, to, and there is a huge, uh, there should be a huge budget for both of them to, to pay all those programmers and uh, pay all those uh, uh, hardware to run those codes and serve uh, the user. And as the user grows, uh, actually this budget should, uh, should also grow. And yeah, even more than uh, what they need to make it, uh, ready for unprecedented, um, you know, situations. So when uh, a lot of uh, user would come or uh, some kind of an attack would happen, so th there should be a lot of things uh, think about, thought about beforehand. So, uh, but uh, on Web three is actually a, uh, utilizing blockchain as our backend. This is a very simple implement, uh, simple definition of it, but it's not exactly like that, but you can think of it as a very simple way of 
describing blockchain. Blockchain itself is actually a very uh, huge uh, fault tolerant uh, distributed database. That's all it is. So it's just save data and make sure nobody can change that data. And th that data will be saved inside the, data, uh, inside the blockchain and will live forever. And uh, each new data that comes uh, to the blockchain and uh, uh, should be saved inside the blockchain has to be uh, somehow consistent with the previous data that uh, blockchain actually holds. So uh, on like blockchains like uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin blockchain is actually the, uh, just holding the uh, value information, like which address has how many uh, amount of BTC token in it. It has actually a language, very uh, limited, uh, small scripting language, which actually just does, uh, returns a true false uh, to for, uh, the, cal the transaction calculation, that's all it does. But um, after uh, Ethereum and introdu uh, uh, introduction of the smart contract idea uh, by Ethereum, uh, everything has changed. So all those uh, processing power, because uh, each block has to be uh, like processed in, in a way that uh, to, to, to make sure all those safety has happened, everything before those data has, uh, you know, um, uh, somehow in a consistent way uh, with the data that we want to uh, add to the blockchain. But uh, all those in, uh, processing power has to uh, be used in other ways to, to, to make it more powerful, not just uh, keeping the, some, some, some kind of value, if, which is great. The uh, idea behind it is fantastic, but uh, we could add... Uh, a more useful way to use all those processing power. So uh, Ethereum came up with the idea of a smart contracts. The smart contracts are uh, actually Ethereum itself is something that, that they called Ethereum virtual machine. Ethereum virtual machine is uh, actually a computer, a very big computer, which uh, we could run software on it and use their, uh, use its uh, processing uh, power uh, and memory in order to uh, serve some kind of data, exactly like a server. But uh, there, there are a few, uh, you could say, differences, a uh, uh, few differences between servers, like uh, as we know it, and uh, blockchain, uh, blockchain EVM or blockchain computer, uh, which are uh, not that... Uh, um, in the concept, they are not that different, but on the implementation, they are. So how it works is like uh, smart contracts are applications. Like when we want to, uh, let's say, uh, have a web app, as we discussed it earlier, uh, we would uh, create the front end and the back end and then upload it uh, and the database uh, and upload all of these into a server or the, uh, lots of servers, different servers. Uh, for uh, different purposes and uh, like different regions of the world and uh, serve those uh, uh, information uh, to, to, to our users. But uh, on blockchain, actually, because you don't have to um, rent and have any kind of uh, process, uh, like uh, hardware to, that you would rent and pay for it. So uh, uh, what happens is that we would uh, actually use the, the uh, processing power of the uh, and also a, stor a storage of the blockchain in order to uh, serve our. So what what happens is that uh, we create all those logic that we want uh, our application to serve inside the smart contract, and then uh, uh, in here we call it deploying it. Yeah, deploying in, in here means uploading it to a server. In here means uploading it to the blockchain, so to the computer, to the EVM. So we deploy the uh, software, the code in, uh, 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 into the blockchain, and makes it ready, uh, which makes it ready for uh, to 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 serve our users, uh, to to serve our data, to serve our logic uh, into the world. But 
it's just uh, you can see it as a back end of the software. We, for that, we need a very good uh, looking uh, front end. So all those front ends uh, has to be on a server because uh, they are not just a, a HTML that would be compiled by um, or interpreted by a browser. So we would need a server in order to compile or interpret the code and shows the final data in format of uh, uh, in a form of uh, HTML, JavaScript, CSS, whatever, uh, as uh, inside the browser to our user. So for that we need a server. But uh, blockchain is not only about the processing; it's also about the storage. But in most cases, uh, a storage is um, not most cases. Actually, the uh, EVM uh, on EVM compatible ones, uh, the storage is super expensive. Like each data, each byte actually counts, and we need to pay gas fee for that to to be saved inside the blockchain. That's why we just keep the very important. Uh, part of the data that we want inside the blockchain and inside the storage in, in the blockchain. So uh, what happened is like uh, the, the idea of distributed uh, system actually um, went to storage uh, services as well. So there, there, there are storage services which are uh, in a way uh, works uh, working as, a, as something like a blockchain itself again. But uh, instead of... Uh, offering processing power, they are offering uh, storage. So we could have a less expensive, distributed, fault tolerant, and 100% uh, uh, uptime uh, file services, like IPFS or Filecoin or AR or services like that. So what, what happens is like we upload all of our files into those uh, platforms, and uh, then we would have uh, we would use uh, different services which again are distributed and uh, uh, also fault tolerant and secure uh, services like Sia or uh, Flick or services like that in order to uh, to compile and serve those files uh, which would be exactly like having all those files inside the server all those. Uh, codes inside the server, compile, and then uh, showing the data to the user. So this way, com combining all of these together will give us a truly 100% decentralized, well, 100% is a very, very uh, like a bold claim, but like uh, almost 100% uh, distributed, secure, and uh, censorship resistant way of having uh, exactly the same service that we already have uh, on web two, uh, but on web three. So we would have like, uh, let's say something like, I don't know, um, Twitter, but uh, in a censorship resistant way and 100% uptime and, and uh, nobody can change anything like anymore. No, nobody has that much power inside the blockchain or inside the, these kind of distributed services. Uh, to, to change that, except in a few cases which some kind of an attack happens, which the, technically it's, uh, theoretically it's actually possible, but technically uh, technically it's not, not that it's like 100%, it's impossible, but at least right now with, uh, with what we have, uh, uh, hardware, software, and the technology, uh, uh, everything like that, it's almost impossible, at least right now or very hard, it's not impossible, but very hard. Uh, so this way we, we could have uh, exactly the same kind of services that we had previously on Web2, but on Web3 uh, with lots of different uh, good, uh, you know, characteristics. Like we don't need any maintenance and uh, we don't need any scalability. L let me add a little bit uh, uh, about the scalability. So the scalability is actually a problem everywhere. Uh, whether we have a Web2 service or a Web3, doesn't matter. Uh, scalability is the number one problem everywhere. When, you, when your service is uh, getting attention, uh, you get lots of traction from users, different uh, parts of the world, uh, different, kind of the, uh, different kind of users, and uh, you grow more and more, uh, you, you need to escape. You need to get lots of different ser servers. You need to uh, you know, distribute them around the world to serve uh, for a specific region uh, in a, a very 
fast and secure way to your, to your user. But on blockchain, uh, that's not the case. So uh, there is no server to, 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 to expand. So the, you just have the blockchain itself and uh, the, the, as big as the blockchain, as uh, much power as the blockchain has, uh, you can use. But that, that's your limit. That's the limit is the blockchain. Uh, from the storage part to the processing part to the serving part for the optoing part, if the blockchain goes down, you are you are down. But because it's uh, the processing power and also the storage is distributed between lots of different uh, here, let's call them miners uh, or nodes. Uh, that, that that's why it makes it a little a, a lot more. Uh, fault tolerant so um, what happens here is like uh, so blockchain is uh, uh, by nature is very slow yeah because each uh, changes each state change inside blockchain has to uh, go through a lot of detail in order to be uh, safely uh, inside the uh, blockchain uh, saved inside the blockchain so what happens is uh there there as much as the uh, uh, nodes or miners uh, contribute processing power to the blockchain the blockchain becomes faster more powerful and uh, you know uh, even safer because as as the blockchain nodes or miners or contributors let's call them uh, grows the, the safety will be more and the processing power will be much more and the, the processing time will be uh, uh, actually less but uh, it's still a lot a lot slower than the servers that you could uh, use but in order to 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 address this problem uh, they uh, lots of different companies lots of different projects came up with idea uh, with idea of layer two scalable uh, projects like Polygon or uh, Arbitrium on Ethereum or uh, Lightning Network, if you have heard about it on blockchain, uh, on a uh, Bitcoin blockchain. So uh, it, it makes it like as fast, almost as fast as uh, what we would experience inside uh, a very regular server on a, a centralized way. So using that and combining all of this together actually give us a very uh, fantastic, uh, you know, infrastructure to develop without, uh, you know, being uh, much aware of that how scalability should work, how uh, um, uh, how how to maintain the security of our uh, data, and how how we, we should, uh, you know, think about the. Uh, the, the the safety of our code and our data and everything like that because everything will uh, happen on the blockchain so blockchain is safe uh, in, in its own way and uh, our files is also uh, available all the time and like hundred percent uptime uh, but almost hundred percent uptime so uh, combining all of this together is actually uh, very cost effective and uh, uh, very good for companies which are uh, trying to scale and serve the uh, user and gain their trust. Uh, th there is just one trade-off here that everything on blockchain is clear. So ev 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 everyone can see it. So it's open. It's like an open source software. Whatever you do, whatever data you, you save, everyone can see it. You cannot cheat in any way. You cannot say that, uh, hey, I, I want to, uh, I, I will, let everyone see the data, all the data that we have uh, saved, uh, except this part. There is no such such a thing. Uh, even if you make it like private or anything like that, it's still readable and everyone can see it. And the code itself, the logic itself, if you want, you cannot cheat here. Uh, so that's another way that, uh, so in some cases that you want to have uh, to 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 hold and save sensitive information, you you you, uh, you should not use uh, blockchain for that because on blockchain everything is uh, open and clear so everyone can see it. Uh, so this actually gives uh, gives company a very uh, good infrastructure to to start with and develop, uh, especially on uh, fintech or 
uh, or th- if you have heard about it, like uh, NFTs or games or things like that, because uh, this way you don't have to take care about uh, the server, just the idea uh, becomes important and how you, you, you present that idea to, the, uh, to your users. And uh, you don't have to worry about the uh, like hardware, let's say infrastructure, or how your data will be stored, and also your users will be a hundred percent sure that you would you would not cheat them, and nothing like shady would happen behind the scene for them to uh, to 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 have a service. So uh, the, to to, um, to for companies to to utilize this power, this fantastic infrastructure, they are um, actually. Uh, hiring a lot of blockchain developers that uh, you know right now is a very if you go to LinkedIn you will see that there is uh, lots of companies uh, in different sectors in different uh, industries are actually starting to use this infrastructure to expand their services or uh, you know somehow transfer from web 2 into web 3 but for people uh, I would uh, suggest uh, for, uh, for anyone who wants to uh, come into this sphere and start uh, doing blockchain development. Uh, I guess there are a few things, few starting point that could help. The, f- uh, the first and foremost, I would suggest to reading the Mastering Bitcoin and Mastering uh, Ethereum uh, books. Uh, both of them actually gives a very good idea of how uh, everything works inside blockchain and uh, and makes you more familiar with uh, Bitcoin blockchain and then Ethereum and you can compare these two ideas with each other and they are free and you can get uh, get them from GitHub Uh, and uh, after that there are like lots of different uh, resources that you can use but I would uh, uh, suggest that the free code camp camp, uh, channel on YouTube uh, there is a lot of free uh, courses on blockchain and a different part of it, from Solidity to you know, Web3, JS or uh, Web3.py, or and, uh, how, how to implement uh, different uh, concepts like DAO or NFTs or uh, ERC20 tokens or uh, any, any other concept that... Uh, you might heard about uh, on news. You can uh, you can find out how how to implement it there and uh, h- how you should um, safely uh, deploy them on blockchain uh, inside your smart contract. Uh, yeah, that's all about it. Sure. Thank you, Mustafa, very much for that uh, really interesting and informative talk. So probably just a few questions. Uh, if we can uh, we can handle. Them. So uh, as you mentioned that uh, you know on top of the block uh, apart from the blockchain there's also a shared uh, storage system. So IPFS I believe is a popular one and uh, at this moment. So uh, you know how does this aspect of decentralization work? So let's say if I if someone buys an NFT. So on the blockchain they have the address and when the actual image or the actual NFT would be stored on this uh, IPFS layer. So what is the cost of storing something like this? And if if I buy an NFT, so do I have to pay something for this decentralized storage? How how does this ecosystem work actually? Uh, Okay, that's actually a very good question. So uh, as I explained, like on mainstream blockchains, it's mostly about uh, process and a, a little bit about the storage because the storage is very expensive there. Uh, so the, the idea of decentralization went to this uh, uh, st- distributing storage rather than di- just distributing processes. So on a storage, we just need to serve files, not processing a huge amount of uh, uh, you know, calculation. So th- there is no calculation there. We just have to serve and make sure it's always available. So as you said, uh, the most popular one is IPFS. IPFS is uh, a free uh, storage service that we can use. 
in order to upload any kind of file, any type of file. If it's a video, picture, uh, an HTML file, a text file, uh, document file, whatever we want, uh, we can upload there and have it forever. And we cannot delete anything there. So it's there forever. And even we, if you want to update something, we have to update, uh, we, we have to upload and we get a new, uh, like actually file, the, the previous file would not be updated. So uh, it's actually very good for NFTs. So we don't actually pay to, to save, uh, especially on IPFS, uh, but uh, uh, in order to have it like fast, uh, in some cases we have to pay for sure. Like services like Filecoin, or AR, uh, we have to pay the, to have all those um, files be available all the time as fast as possible. Uh, because um, uh, if you are familiar with the concept of miners, miners actually work uh, as a processors uh, for blockchains. But inside the distribution uh, distributed file systems like IPFS, uh, the you know, drives the hard drives the memory is important uh, be, uh, becomes important here so uh, the, uh, there are lots of people around the world uh, which are connected to the internet and have their uh, storage shared through this service and serving all those files uh, so we have to pay them for uh, we have to compensate them for uh, what they are contributing to the network so uh, on ipfs because each a user has to uh, be a node somehow, like a contributor to the service. Uh, so that's how it works. Out. That's how uh, you can use it to uh, uh, upload files, host files in a distributed way, secure way, and uh, online all the time and for free. Uh, but there, there are some limitations, but anyway. but. Uh, there are other services like Pinata that we can use in order to upload our uh, files there, but it's still using the IPFS itself, but it makes it uh, ready around the world because it has uh, lots of different uh, storage servers, let's call them, around the world. So it makes it super fast for us to, uh, to, to serve our files. But in case of like specifically NFTs, because it's just one time that we upload, mostly one time that we upload uh, our media in, in, into the IPFS and the, the rest of the data, uh, also it's just a taste, so there wouldn't uh, be, be much of a, uh, you know, a hassle to read them or serve them. Uh, when you are upload or let's say mint, uh, when you mint an NFT, a new NFT, when you create a new NFT uh, and uh, upload it to one of these uh, storage services, all of those information that you, uh, you want your NFT to have, uh, most of the uh, NFT marketplaces actually cache all those data. So what happens is that uh, you uh, one time you, you upload your, uh, let's say, picture, and uh, some data regarding that picture of your NFT in, into the IPFS. And just one time, uh, let's say OpenSea, you go to OpenSea, you just uh, open your uh, NFT. OpenSea first time actually gets all the information from the IPFS, cache it into their own server. And from, uh, the, uh, from that time, it will actually serve it from their own server. So it makes it cheaper for them, faster for us, and usable for everyone but the original data will still be on IPFS forever free and cannot be changed anymore. So that's how generally it works, but it could uh, actually be uh, used for different uh, kind of services. Uh, like, uh, as I said, uh, to, to hosting our uh, website files, like whatever they are, like JS files, HTML files, anything like that, or even our PDF or any type of data that we want to use. But uh, it's actually uh, gained this momentum uh, because of NFT, these uh, distributed file systems, uh, because NFTs has to save all those data and they cannot do that inside um, uh, regular blockchains because it's super expensive and just one picture saving their uh, uh, saving one picture inside of the say the blockchain would cost us I don't know <laughs> a lot like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollars or maybe even more uh, if, if even if it was possible mm, but uh, and uh, distributed uh, file systems 
storage or storage services, it becomes super cheaper and also cost effective to 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 host our files there. Sure. So uh, even these distributed uh, storage systems, so even they would you know ultimately work on nodes. Say I am contributing some storage, or the entire community is contributing storage. So uh, you know one thing that I would see is we need to motivate these uh, nodes. Uh, we need to incentivize these nodes in order to keep uh, keep donating or keep contributing the storage. So uh, uh, some. What are your views on how is that done right now? How, how can that be? Uh, okay, so uh, on IPFS, as I said, it, uh, we have to uh, like uh, either pay for those uh, third party services because on IPFS itself, uh, in order to upload something, we have to become a node. First, we have to become a node, then we can upload it. Without that, we cannot. Uh, uh, unless we use a, a third party services like Pinata. So Pinata actually charge us to, to do that. If, you know, if, our, uh, if we want to, our files to be available or a, a lot of files we want to host there, we can as much as we want, but we have to pay for it. Uh, this is for IPFS specifically. For other services like Filecoin or AR, for, uh, uh, for example, in AR, there is no free one. Uh, for each file that we want to save on AR, uh, or uh, and we have to pay some, some amount of uh, AR token uh, in order to incentivize all those contributors to the uh, to the to the network uh, to 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 save our files and host it uh, inside the network and be available uh, through internet. Uh, so th this uh, this is the same situation for Filecoin as well. So if you want to upload it to the Filecoin, you have to pay a, a little bit of file token, and uh, so uh, it's actually that in uh, incentive that we would pay to 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 all those contributors in order to, to save and host our files through the network. But the, the good thing here is that you just pay once. This is a good thing, you just pay once, but the, you don't pay for any time uh, that someone requested that file to, uh, to, to read that file. So we just for uploading and saving it, we just have to pay once and it's there forever. And uh, it's served throughout the network, anywhere uh, around the internet that you just requested, you can get it and at, 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 at any time. But there's just one pay, uh, uh, fee, which is, uh, let's say, okay, let's call it uh, gas fee. It's not a gas fee here. It's actually pay for the services, uh, pay for the storage that we use. But anyway, it's just, uh, it works the same thing as a gas fee on uh, you know, regular blockchains because on, uh, on, um, on regular blockchains, we actually pay uh, an amount of money to uh, miners or uh, node, con uh, node operators in order to, to handle our uh, transaction, to process our transaction. But in here, we pay them to, to handle our files. So it's somehow the same thing, but, but it doesn't call gas fee here. But anyway, we have to pay based on the, uh, actually a certain uh, specification, like how uh, big the file is, like uh, how fast we want that file to be served, because there is also another uh, third party services here as well that we could use, uh, uh, you know, they are on top of, let's say, uh, AR or um, Filecoin that using the Filecoin, they are actually, the, they are a very big contributor to the Filecoin network or to, to, AR, to the AR network. So they are using their own infrastructure to, to host and serve our uh, files, but they charge a little bit, maybe extra in order to uh, give us that service. But uh, the underlying technology that they are using, that is the same thing, the Filecoin or AR or uh, whatever that uh, uh, distributed file system is. Sure, sure. So uh, if we compare the centralized systems today versus uh, decentralized systems such as blockchain today, so one thing we compromise uh, uh, would be scalability as of today. As of today, blockchain centralized system would be more scalable and probably faster because there's a central point where you can control things. So in the, uh, in the coming future, do you see that uh, blockchain solutions becoming even more scalable than central solutions we have today? 
and even more faster, then it becomes a no-brainer to actually use blockchain because it's giving us everything that we need. Do you see that happen? Yeah, that, that's a very, very good question. So uh, actually, it has to happen in order for uh, this uh, technology to uh, to to live lo- a long time. Because if it doesn't adapt to what we need, so of course it wouldn't. Uh, it would be go away. But that's not the case. Uh, th- there are lots of different innovations coming to 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 play uh, each day. You can see like each problem uh, of the blockchain uh, will be solved again by uh, someone else. So some some new uh, project, I mean. Uh, so uh, of course, uh, the, I would see it. It would be like much more faster that uh, than uh, servers that we are using right now. Like the technologies like uh, uh, IOTA uh, or Neota te- uh, uh, network. Neota network is actually something. Uh, for Internet of Things, on Internet of Things, the the whole idea is like having a very small pr- uh, processing power, but a lot of it. So, uh, yeah, like in the blockchains like that, and what happens is like by growing the blockchain, uh, it actually costs less and almost zero to do any transaction because each country, uh, uh, each. Uh, user of the network becomes every layer in that. Uh, and a network so it's actually contributes something to the network so that's why it becomes like almost zero because i uh, everyone use uh, my infrastructure to to uh, relay or process their transaction and i use their theirs uh, you know it's uh, something like that but uh, of course there, there there are like lots of different ideas are uh, either testing or in their like very uh, first days of uh, you know uh, being publi- uh, published, but uh, for sure for the future, of course it happens. Uh, but right now, it's uh, there. There are trade-offs, uh, especially regarding the speed of the service. Uh, if you want to 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 be fully decentralized service or, or partially decentralized, uh, because uh, mostly because of this uh, challenge of scalability, uh, we would uh, but most of the, actually the. Uh, projects on Web3 actually use some part on a server and uh, the data part, the database part is they actually use, uh, you know, blockchain for to, to save all those data. And uh, the another problem for scalability uh, regarding blockchain is that uh, each uh, blockchain as they grow, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, for now at least like, uh, because they are most like let's say famous one, and there are the, the most the, the, the best ones actually on the market. Uh, so what happens is like by growing them, uh, if uh, more people coming to to the network using the network, the network becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. So you, uh, right now it's like around I don't know 300 GB to to have a full node of uh, let's say Ethereum or Bitcoin, and it it could grow to a few terabytes or even more, uh, but through the time it becomes super expensive to go uh, to to hold that uh, all those uh, you know files and uh, you know have it everywhere so we have to come up with something which uh, could help us to, in order to escape like the lightning network on uh, bitcoin which is like a very fast very good idea of like the best one on uh, bitcoin that so far that could uh, you know process our uh, transaction uh, with almost zero fee uh, in a even faster than uh, uh, paying with uh, like Visa or MasterCard or a- any other card. Uh, but uh, still, because it's not uh, widely accepted everywhere, uh, there is still lots of challenges uh, regarding that. But in the future, of course, there, there, there will be like already they are working on it. Like. As I mentioned, like uh, so, uh, blockchains like uh, Polygon, the uh, la- uh, layer two solutions like Arbitrium, like these, uh, these are very fast. Of course, they are not as fast as they should be, but they are very, very uh, good uh, amend- uh, uh, amendment to 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 the blockchain to uh, they are serving like Ethereum. Uh, uh, they are working very fast there they are processing lots of information in a fraction of a second uh, but this will be you know, like uh, improved uh, 
you know, through time, especially, I guess, in next 10 years, you would have, like, used uh, one very big computer called blockchain. So, like, there will be, like, lots of them, like uh, Solana or uh, Cosmos or, or Ethereum or other blockchains like that, that uh, or even th those that are not here yet, but they will come in the future. But uh, they would definitely solve this problem as uh, uh, like Solana did a lot of uh, other will come and uh, like uh, solve the other ones because uh, as it grows we need more even more than what Solana may, may, may be offers or what other layer two solution would offer but it happens during time so as we need it we uh, you know some kind of solution we will think about it and uh, you know implement it sure yes. So you also mentioned the Ethereum and layer two right on top of that. So we're also seeing Ethereum two coming up now. And so it is also trying to solve the scalability issue and some other issues. So uh, can you uh, can you tell us you know how Ethereum itself is evolving and what kind of uh, solutions we have for layer two today? Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, Ethereum is uh, actually very, but, but blockchain in general is actually a very good uh, platform because uh, any kind of problem it has, it just uh, an updates away from being solved. You know, you just have to update it and then it will be solved. This is uh, what's uh, good about blockchain, uh, which none of those services could uh, like uh, traditional monetary system would uh, solve it. Uh, but uh, in case of Ethereum, Ethereum right now is a proof of work system. So uh, uh, how it works is exactly like, uh, like uh, Bitcoin blockchain. So there would be lots of miners which uh, solve some kind of uh, very uh, hard problem and uh, then adding a block and then give, uh, getting a reward uh, for that. So that's how basically it works. But because this problem becomes bigger and bigger and harder to solve, and uh, the, alongside that, uh, our hardware should be like uh, updated each um, like year or each few years at least in order to keep up with that, uh, you know, uh, improvement uh, uh, on the, uh, the challenge that software brings up. Uh, so uh, in order to solve that. Uh, actually, uh, there are different uh, like techniques that uh, Ethereum or uh, some other blockchains actually use. Uh, one of the main thing that the, the, the huge uh, like changes that Ethereum is about to have is the Ethereum 2. Ethereum 2 will uh, actually becomes uh, the, an update into Ethereum uh, 1, let's call it, or uh, what we have it already, uh, which will be proof of stake. Proof of stake becomes much more scalable than proof of work because in proof of work, if it reaches the point that uh, that's like the the, uh, the solving the, the finding a hash for a block becomes like super hard and our uh, the hardware would not be like as good as they they should in order to solve it or very uh, not as good as the. Uh, and they should because uh, during the time the, the hardware will uh, actually improve as well, but um, not efficient enough. Uh, so it becomes very hard and, uh, and expensive actually to maintain a network. So in order to do that, uh, the, the idea of proof of stake uh, is actually the best next solution. So that, that's why Ethereum um, is actually the, the changing from proof of work into proof of staking. Uh, I hope so this year, but maybe in, at least in the next few years, uh, we would have it. But uh, on Ethereum 2, the scalability problem is a little bit addressed uh, by making it from proof of work to proof of stake. Firstly, to, to make it uh, to make all the transaction process uh, more uh, like uh, very fast uh, you know, compared to, to what uh, happens right now and much more cheaper and there are other technology uh, techniques actually uh, would come to uh, ethereum too like a different kind of uh, uh, you know uh, handling the transactions like using uh, te uh, techniques like sharding or things like that in order to process a, a transaction 
uh, which makes it uh, faster for the blockchain and cheaper for the blockchain to process each transaction that uh, comes to the, uh, to the to the to to the memory pool in order to be processed and then saved and um, uh, inside the uh, block. But um, th th this is the the the. Uh, the, the biggest, I guess, changes that uh, Ethereum is about to have. But uh, the, the other ones is uh, actually the uh, parallel, uh, parallel processing. It's actually the, what happens is Ethereum is about to uh, change in a way that uh, not just a few transactions per second, but it makes it like much more than that by doing uh, all those transactions, uh, processing all those transactions parallelly so it makes it a little bit faster but still it's uh, very far away from ideal but uh, much better from what we have uh, right now but uh, who knows ethereum 3 maybe <laughs> would be the, the 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 best one that we might have but we we, we don't know as we uh, face these challenges uh, because at the beginning of uh, these blockchains uh, lifetime uh, the uh, what happened was no one thought that uh, this much attention could uh, come to the blockchains uh, 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 like never like they, they would uh, thought about it as a very good idea or very good implementation of trustless systems but uh, this much attention needs a lot of more changes to uh, for the uh, blockchains to have but during time, yeah, there, there would be, of course, uh, you know, more innovations and uh, faster processing time. Sure. Uh, thank you. And so also, uh, you know, I recently heard about layer, layer three kind of uh, blockchains uh, coming up. So they would then uh, have a kind of safe point on layer two, which would eventually have on layer one. So theoretically, this can we can have multiple layers and then scale it to whatever degree we want. So, you know, what are your views on that? Because I, I'm not sure if it actually exists today. Um, you mean the layer, uh, layer one and layer two uh, scalability? I, I didn't get the first part. Uh, so, uh, a layer three in layer concept, three. a layer three that mm -hmm. interacts with layer two, and in turn that they yeah, interact with layer one. So. We can have multiple layers theoretically, and a lot of scalability is possible. So, what are the views on that? Yeah. So uh, that's the point. You see, the the uh, as much as we go deeper inside the layers, it's uh, of course it makes it super fast and. Um, like much more cost effective. If you have used Polygon, you see like how cheap blockchain could be. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> the thing is that um, I don't see it as going more deeper in so like uh, uh, layer wise. Uh, what I would see is like, yeah, for now it would be an interesting idea that you would have like layer three, even layer four to make that was uh, that one even faster. But through time, the layer one, the main uh, network should be improved in order to uh, maximum layer two or maybe layer three should like uh, solve our problems. But uh, other than that, if you want to go deeper, I guess uh, other ideas like in case of uh, like Ethereum, because uh, the layer two would not uh, be sufficient enough to come up with, uh, with layer three, which of course is much more faster than layer two. But uh, what happens is that competitors like Solana comes to to play because they say, hey, I have a very good layer one infrastructure. Let's uh, make layer two for me. So it would be as fast as a, like a, a regular server. You know, this competition actually makes uh, the, the uh, you know, the, the uh, total blockchain uh, world much more faster, much more reliable and, uh, uh, you know, cheaper to, to, to use during time. But uh, I don't see it going much more deeper than that, uh, because uh, if that happens, of course, there, there, there would be another Solana comes to play, uh, which, uh, you know, would have a faster and a lot more concurrent uh, transaction processing. But um, I don't think uh, it would go deeper than that. Yeah, maybe it would, but not for a long time because, you know, of course, a new innovation would come. Sure, sure. So, like in terms of adoption today, 
we see a lot of projects being built on layer two, and so uh, even Polygon is uh, quite adopted in the industry today. A lot of projects being built on that. So uh, in the future, do you see a layer two winning out, or a, a native layer one would actually uh, get more adoption eventually? What are you? Uh, I see layer two uh, as a very mm, good addition to layer one because, you know, layer one has to, you know, hold a lot of uh, very heavy logic. And if we cannot, uh, at least not right now, I don't see it. Uh, we would reach a point that layer one would be sufficient enough. Yeah, uh, you know, blockchains like Solana actually... Uh, 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 and, you know, uh, claiming that that we have uh, the lots of process, which they are like sixteen thousand, if I'm not mistaken, uh, per second, but uh, per block. But uh, that that's the point. Uh, like, uh, if it scale a lot, look, there there would be lots of users for it. It wouldn't be sufficient enough. You know, uh, we we, uh, we might wait a little bit, which uh, you know, it's not a good thing, but. Uh, uh, anyway, the layer two is actually there to uh, reduce the burden into layer one uh, in general. I mean, like technically. Uh, so the layer two, I guess, will be there for sure. But uh, more than layer two, uh, at least not right now, I don't see any uh, like. Uh, you know, any more, you know, contribution to, to, to the blockchain or maybe need for that expansion. But uh, I guess layer two will be there for sure uh, for a long time because uh, it, it, all those uh, encryption process, uh, uh, in encryption, which is the, uh, like the main uh, processing, uh, yeah, and, you know, overhead on, on uh, blockchain is happening on, uh, should happen on layer one because uh, all those techniques might be updated, needs to be updated through time. And uh, uh, that should happen like, you know, like a, a software uh, life cycle. So you have to have a very uh, core, uh, uh, you know, engine for your software. Then uh, you have different modules to, to uh, using that engine in order to serve a specific, uh, you know, use cases, a, a, a specific, you know, operation for, for your uh, software. So it's the same thing here. So the, ma the main layer should be there, but uh, on top of it, there would be like uh, different layer twos, maybe layer trees even, uh, but uh, wouldn't go, I guess, more much more deeper than that uh, because on layer two we have like different uh, use cases uh, that we want to improve for example uh, if you want to improve uh, blockchain for gaming we might need some specific layer two for that to 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 process some specific kind of you know information to make it uh, uh, you know more uh, usable for gamers and the game industry but for one we would have like uh, some some layer two which specifically try to handle the uh, you know uh, the transaction the uh, money uh, uh, you know monetary system for us because it would be like different kind of needs there maybe some kind applying some kind of uh, legal uh, regulation inside the block uh, a blockchain itself inside the logic uh, itself which would happen on uh, you know layer two and uh, there would be like different ones uh, so we could have we would use like different ones. so for example if you uh imagine uh let's say visa or master so uh, they are like different technology on top of our monetary system on top of all the laws that we have so but, but they are you know, creating an infrastructure with a specific laws uh, for their own in, in a specific logic for their own so they could uh, we could see them as a layer two for our monetary system and in, on top of them there could be another layer to to use the master card in order to process some other things so it could happen exactly inside the blockchain as well so we would have like uh, ethereum uh, let's call well, let's say ethereum uh, as our 
layer one or the 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 law enforcement here like the the government here and on layer two there will be like different processing uh, and different layers which offer different kind of services in different ways uh to to serve in a specific uh you know use cases uh if it's uh yeah i don't know DeFi or i don't know games or i don't know uh, any other things uh it could definitely happen like that way as well Sure, sure. So as you also mentioned that we can see a lot of customized kind of layer tools which are uh, which are built for a specific function on top of layer one. So is there a limit to how many layer two or layer one can support or there can be any number of layer tools built on top of layer one? Uh, what do you mean exactly? Like uh, if you could have like 10 layers, like layer 10, which is like layer three on top of layer two, layer four on top of layer three, and it goes on like that. Uh, no, I, I actually meant that we have a layer one, like the Ethereum. And so there can be any number of layer twos on it, like Polygon is one layer two. We also see in other layer two. So there can be hundreds of layer two on it. That of course, of course, there, there is no limitation on that because uh, 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 as we can already see, like uh, there, there are like lots of new ones that come in, like uh, layer two, uh, I mean, um, projects are coming like this Arbitrarium, which you know, got a very good momentum uh, for a few months uh, back in 2021. And uh, that's a good thing because actually uh, uh, what happens is like, they, they see what have, uh, what uh, projects like Polygon did. They come up with, uh, they, they took all those, you know, experiences there because it's a free world, open source, everything is there out there and everyone can see it. So I can see what problems is there and I can come up with a better solution in order to solve that. It's not that the, the, uh, the previous one is bad because the previous, it's a software world, software gets updated every day. So uh, that, the Polygon could update in order to, to fix those, in order to compete with their uh, new competitors. But uh, I, I don't uh, think uh, there, uh, there would be any limit uh, because uh, of course there is not, but uh, it depends on uh, which one gets attention, which one actually gets to be used. Like right now, uh, the, like uh, on layer twos at least, uh, if, uh, the polygon on Ethereum is like the most uh, used one because everywhere you go, you can see uh, they, they offer some kind of services uh, on, uh, if they are offering some kind of services on Ethereum, they would also do that uh, on polygon as well. So this, this makes it more, uh, you know, usable. So more, uh, uh, yeah, you know, widely used, so more popular and, you know, uh, yeah, I, I don't think uh, that there would be any like limit to that, but uh, th th there will be some very, very high competition there. Uh, sure, Mustafa. And with that, thank you very much for your time and for the input. Thank you for having me.